Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Springing Forward, Books for Young Readers. I'm Julia Smith, Senior Editor, Books for Youth. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. To resize the slides, look to the magnifying glass icon located to the left of the slides. There you can increase or decrease the size and select how you'd like the slides to appear. If you lose audio or would like to change the way you're connected to it, look to the bottom of your screen for a circle with three dots. Clicking that icon will open a menu with an audio connection option. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the right side of your screen is a control panel with an area at the bottom for Q and A. Simply type the question you have into the field and click send. Attendees can see all questions asked during the webinar and the answers provided. Links to today's slides and the title list were sent directly to you from WebEx at the start of the webinar, but you can also download them at any time by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive a follow-up email containing the links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Valerie Howlett, Senior Marketing and Publicity Manager at Running Kids Press, Dina Sherman, School and Library Marketing Director at Disney Publishing Worldwide, Sarah Woodruff, Senior Marketing Manager, Education and Library at Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing, Amanda Acevedo, Marketing Manager at Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Books for Young Readers, Taylor McBroom, Marketing Specialist at Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Books for Young Readers, and Christina Pullis, Executive Editor at Albert Whitman & Company. First, we'll hear from Valerie Howlett. Valerie is the Senior Marketing and Publicity Manager of Running Press Kids, a division of the Hachette Book Group. Welcome, Valerie. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. So I'm Val, um, Senior Marketing and Publicity Manager of a small publishing imprint in Philadelphia called Running Press Kids. We like to say that Running Press is where books come to have fun, so in our children's books, play is crucial. Whether through innovative design or funny text, we make sure to incorporate some element of play in every book we publish. So let's get to the picture books we have coming out this spring. This April, put on your red shoes and dance the blues along with this fabulously fun tribute to the iconic singer David Bowie's number one hit song, Let's Dance. We've partnered with Bowie's estate to use the original lyrics from the song. Illustrator Hannah Marks plays homage to all eras of Bowie throughout her illustrations while keeping the mood lighthearted and kid-friendly. Lewis Carroll has inspired young readers for generations, though not many are as familiar with his seemingly nonsensical poem, Jag Jabberwocky, which appears in his classic Through the Looking Glass novel. Running Press Kids has a history of publishing classically illustrated picture books, such as The Night Before Christmas, The Little Mermaid, and more. Many of these backlist titles were painted by award-winning illustrator Charles Santori, who sadly passed away last year after completing Jabberwocky for our imprint. Charlie was an incredible talent and a meticulous researcher who brought idea, the idea of illustrating an edition of Jabberwocky to our attention a few years ago. Based on research he did and commentary he read from various scholars, Charlie created a magical yet semi-realistic world in which a brave hero sets off into the woods to slay the Jabberwock, a fearsome creature with glowing eyes and enormous teeth. An illustrated edition of Carol's complete poem has not been in print for more than a few decades, and we are so proud to be publishing this stunning classic for young readers and their parents this summer. And now for something completely different. <laughs> the next book I'm so proud to introduce to you publishes in May, just in time for all the June Pride celebrations. If you've ever heard of Drag Queen Story Hour, 
Uh, author Little Miss Hot Mess is one of the Story Hour's sounding queens. She's been known to rally crowds of very small, distractible children with her special take on the wheels on the bus. The hips on the drag queen go swish, swish, swish. The hair goes up, the fingers go snap, and the illustrations are so good. Avant-garde and kinetic and fun, fun, fun. And as you can see, the queens paint a grayscale town in color as they prance through it. This book has already received a starred review from Kirkus. Counting Elephants has a birthday today. Today is its first day on sale. This is a great book for teaching counting down or subtraction, and kids won't even notice that they're learning because they'll be giggling over the back and forth between the counter and the magician. The counter just wants to count 10 elephants, but the magician makes it tricky by turning each elephant into something silly, like a frog or like peanut butter. You get the idea. Kids will have to stay on top of counting how many elephants remain on each spread. If you've ever been told by an older relative to stop making a silly face or your face will freeze like that, this book is for you. All throughout history, kids have never stopped making silly faces and getting ominous warnings from grown-ups. Enter Wendell, an anxious kid who always follows the rules except for one time. Spoiler alert, Wendell's face eventually gets unstuck when he relaxes a little and decides to accept himself. And I know it's still spring, but I want to give you a heads up about the two biggest books on our upcoming fall list so that you'll know to look out for them. This is a beautiful folk tale brought to us by acclaimed literary author for adults, Thridi Umrigar, about refugees. A king tells a group of people that his country is too full by pouring a cup to the brim with milk. Then, one of the refugees pours sugar into the milk to show that their presence would only sweeten his subjects' lives. The story is important, but the illustrations are the real star. You can see here the opening story is of a modern immigrant girl who feels lonely and small in her new home of America. To, to make her feel welcome, her aunt tells her the folktale of sugar and milk, and this story within a story has a beautifully illustrated frame around every page. We all know bedtime can be a nightly struggle for many parents and kids. Enter Catherine Locke's debut picture book that champions bedtime while reinforcing that kids are active participants in their daily and nightly routines. This is Superhero Instruction Manual meets Bedtime for Batman, and is sure to positively add to the collection of bedtime literature available in the picture book space. Both Catherine and Rayanne, the illustrator, were adamant about inclusion and diversity being a huge part of this book, and I am proud to say that I feel most children will be able to see themselves in this book as superhero kids who can save the day, affect change in the world, and also get a good night's rest. Thank you so much for listening, and please feel free to reach out to me personally if you have any questions. Thank you, Valerie. Next, we'll hear from Dina Shirtman. There she is. Dina has been the Director of School and Library Marketing at Disney Publishing Worldwide since 2009. Prior to that, she was the School and Library Senior Marketing Manager at HarperCollins Children's Books. Dina received her MLS from the University of Pittsburgh and worked as a children's librarian for 10 years, first at the Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh and then at the Brooklyn Children's Museum. As a librarian, Dina wrote reviews for School Library Journal, including a starred review for Laurie Hulls Anderson's Speak, and she wrote articles and presented on topics of museum and library collaborations. Take it away, Dina. Thank you so much. So I'm excited to be here with you guys today. Um, these are, uh, like Val said, these are spring announcements, but I did slip some fall titles in there because I couldn't resist. Uh, so we're going to start off with some picture books. 
First up, we have Ellie Makes a Friend from uh, Pixar animator Mike Wu. So this is actually our third Ellie picture book. The first two, I put the covers down there for you to see. The first one was Ellie. The second one is Ellie in Concert. And Ellie, if you don't know her, is a wonderful uh, elephant at a zoo who has a talent for painting. And in this book, a new uh, animal comes to the zoo, a panda named Ping from China. And Ellie isn't quite sure what to make of it when everybody loves Ping's art style and the drawings that uh, that he makes, because Ellie feels like that was always her thing. Um, but it's a really nice story of friendship and acceptance and learning about different cultures as Ellie and Ping become friends and realize that they actually have so much in common. Aren't those illustrations so cute? Next up from best-selling author Ryan T. Higgins. So I loved We Don't Need Our Classmates. I hope everyone else did as well. The hilarious picture book uh, about Penelope the T-Rex, who goes to school for the first time with a bunch of kids and has to learn the important lesson of not eating them. It's wrong. Um, so Penelope and her friends are back, and we will rock our classmates. And Penelope can't wait to rock out on her guitar at the talent show. Um, but what she realizes is that can be a little bit scary and she's a little bit nervous. Um, but she's, she's ready to go and her wonderful parents talk to her and help her understand that she and her friends will be just fine. Uh, one of the things I love about this book so much is just, you know, Penelope gets so into it. You can see from the cover, she's got her Bowie makeup. She's got her Doc Martin boots on. She is ready to go. And I think kids are going to really love this and really identify with that whole, I want to do this, but I'm also scared. Next up, as I said, sneaking in a little bit from fall. So any of you who saw Frozen 2 know that one of the exciting things in this story was Olaf learned to read. Um, and reading, as it does with everyone, uh, really opened up his eyes to the world. So in this sweet picture book that we have coming out, um, the local librarian in Arendelle has to go away for a few days, and he's got to close the library. And of course, nobody wants that. They're all upset. So Anna realizes that now that Olaf can read, he would be the perfect substitute librarian. As you can see, Olaf maybe doesn't follow classification quite the way we would like him to, um, but his love of books and his joy is infectious, and he and the kids will have a great time, and he'll learn a little bit about the library while he's doing this. Moving on to another great picture book, so Snow Day for Groot by Brendan Deneen and Kale Atkinson. Um, this is our third Groot picture book. The first one was Night Night Groot, and the second, day was, second one was First Day of Groot. So in this one, um, another milestone for kids, their first snow day. Rocket and Groot are off to New York City to save the day when it's snowing. Um, they also get to hang out with Spider-Man in this one, which if you've read the other picture books, you know that Groot has a thing. He's a huge fan of Spider-Man, so very exciting. And on every single page, there is a teeny tiny Ant-Man for kids to find. Um, and there's just some great New York art in here as well, including this fun adventure at the library. All right, moving on to our readers and chapter books. So what about worms? also by Ryan Higgins, um, is our seventh Elephant and Piggy-like reading book. These are the books um, from Mo Willems where he's working with other authors and illustrators to write stories that are perfect for those Elephant and Piggy aged readers. Um, and Elephant and Piggy do a cameo in each one. They do sort of an intro and an outro talking about the story. Well, in this one, Tiger is very brave and he is not afraid of anything except worms. They're slimy, they wiggle, you can't tell their tops from their bottoms. And as he's walking around, he's getting himself more and more upset thinking that there might be worms in his apple, there might be worms in his flower pot. He starts dropping things, um, as you can see. And what we learn is that worms don't really like tigers either because they walk instead of wiggle and you can tell their tops from their bottoms and they're furry. But they also see that tigers leave them nice things like apples and dirt, which they they love. So they decide they have to go and let Tiger know just how much they like him, which I don't think he's going to really appreciate. Moving on to our World of Reading series. So most of our World of Reading titles are done in paperback, but we have a couple of titles this year that we've done as paper over board as well, perfect for the library market. So first up that just came out, we have, um, in just in time for the election, a level, read, level two reader, vote for Minnie. So Minnie has decided that she wants to run for president of the Adventure Club, and she's trying to get all of her friends on board to help her. This is also part of our World of Reading where there are facts involved. So you'll see on this spread there's an, a little 
additional factoid about Mount Everest, and there's also election facts throughout on this. So it's perfect to talk to your younger kids about uh, what is going on with all this election stuff that they're hearing about. And then next up, coming out, oh, today, happy book birthday. Um, we have a level one reader for the very popular Vampirina called The Hauntly Girls. And in this one, Vampirina and her mom decide to start a mother-daughter book club. Um, but things get a little out of hand because their books are not always like other people's books. Um, I also did want to call out, so we did a really great poster and bookmark with ALA. As you can see, go Batty for Books. And those would be great additions to your library for all those Vampirina fans. So as you can see with our readers, all the girls are doing different things with their moms, and that's why Vampirina and her mom decide to start a book club. And then next up we have these chapter books. This is our series called um, Before the Stories. So these are original stories that basically show how each princess became who they are, but starting as a young girl. Um, and they each, each one is illustrated with about 30 pieces of art and then these beautifully illustrated covers. So we have three uh, that have just come out. We have Mulan's Secret Plan, Anna Finds a Friend, and Elsa's Icy Rescue. So in Mulan's Secret Plan, um, before she saved China, she was a girl ready to learn. So this is a school story, and she goes to school, and she's not quite sure that it's exactly what she thought it would be, but she wants to learn, and she's going to figure out how to do it. And then Anna Finds a Friend is about a girl, um, Anna, who's feeling lonely. As you may recall, she doesn't really have her sister when she's younger. And she imagines another girl her own age named Astrid and sends her a letter. And much to her surprise, she starts getting letters back, and the two become pen pals. And then before Elsa was the queen, she was a girl with magic. And she's excited to go spend time at her family's summer home so she can sort of learn more about her powers, um, but a few things go wrong, and it's the first time she starts to really wonder if maybe this isn't such a good thing to have magic after all. And this is just an interior to give you a sense of um, the reading level and how the illustrations are worked into the story. And we'll be doing more of these with different princesses coming up um, probably about two every season. That's it for me. This is, uh, this is my contact information where you can find us on social media and our online catalog. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to shoot me an email. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dina. Our next presenter will be Sarah Woodruff. Sarah is the Senior Marketing Manager in the Education and Library Department at Simon & Schuster. She long ago embraced the art of reading multiple books in a variety of genres at once and is always eager to talk about them. Her favorite books are The Hours by Michael Cunningham and On Writing by Stephen King. Thanks for joining us today, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Um, so here's my contact information. Feel free to email me with any questions or if you're looking for any um, copies of books or ARCs. Um, the first I'm going to talk to you about is a new imprint for us that we're very excited about. Um, Deneen Milner is an award-winning journalist, author, and founder of MyBrownBaby.com. Um, she'll be publishing books for all ages by African-American writers and illustrators. Um, her inaugural list with us starts uh, in spring, so this season, with Just Like a Mama. Um, Deneen is inspired to publish books that speak to the human experience of African-American children. So you'll see a lot of everyday moments uh, where kids can see themselves reflected in these books that they read. Um, Just Like a Mama is about the love connection between a little girl and the woman who is raising her while her parents are absent. And then My Rainy Day Rocket Ship is about a little boy who uses everyday items from around his house to build a rocket ship in his living room to combat boredom on a rainy day. And that comes out in May. Uh, this used for a few interiors from Just Like a Mama. I'm going to push through with another picture book. Um, this is a debut author, Jasmine Wright. I'm going to read just a couple lines from the book so you get a sense of, of the rhythm and um, kind of the power behind Jasmine's words. Hold your head high. No matter what stands in the way of your dreams, remember this. You can push through anything. If someone tells you it's too hard, don't you ever listen. You tell them, I'm going to push through. So this is a mantra that Jasmine used in her third grade classroom. 
to inspire her kids and encourage them to persevere and believe in themselves. Um, she recorded a video of her class reciting the mantra that went viral. Uh, it was also used in a Gap commercial. And it has helped propel her message into a larger movement and organization that she calls the Push Through Organization um, dedicated to these themes. So the Push Through movement is global. Um, you can learn, learn more about it at her website, wepushthrough.org. Um, her empowering words not only lift children up, um, but they show them how to lift themselves up and seize their own potential, making this a very empowering, energetic, and all-inclusive picture book that celebrates resilience in the face of adversity. Jasmine began her teaching career at a Title I school in Memphis as a member of Teach for America. More recently, she taught at a charter school in Wilmington, Delaware, and was chosen to be a Teachers for Global Classrooms Fellow. And we will have a curriculum guide and poster available for this one. This is just a couple of interiors. Um, and then we have the Click Clack series. I'm sure you're very familiar with this, with the fantastic pairing of author-illustrator Doreen Cronin and Betsy Lewin. Um, so if you can believe it, Click Clack Moo started in 2000. So this year is uh, we're celebrating the book's 20th anniversary. Uh, we're also re-promoting their especially timely picture book, Duck for President, or should I say Back the Quack. Um, if you were at ALI Midwinter, you may have seen a duck wandering around our booth, and you may also see him at future shows this year. Um, we'll have a downloadable guide with discussion questions and activities for all of the Click Clack books that will be available soon. And then we also have... Um, a few new 2020 titles. We have two new ready to read level two titles coming in May, Duck Stays in the Truck and Pool Party. And then we also have a picture book in October called Click Clack Good Night. Um, Snail Finds a Home is the newest title in our PICS program, which is a line of easy to read illustrated chapter books that are filled with simple text, speech balloons, and engaging illustrations meant for grades one to four, ages six to nine. Um, in that same vein, we're also launching two graphic novel chapter books. So they are titles that you've seen before, but they are each a bind-up of two previous titles in the same series, which makes it a bit of a longer read um, that blends picture books and chapter books. So a nice bridge for independent readers. Um, the first one, Extraordinary Warren's World, includes Extraordinary Warren and uh, Extraordinary Warren Saves the Day. And then um, Snail's Silly Adventures includes Snail's Finds a Home, which is the PICS title you see on the left, and Snail Has Lunch. We've also um, launched a QUICS program over the last few years. We now have um, 32 titles available across mul multiple series. Um, so this is a short chapter book line, perfect for emerging readers, grades K to 3 and ages 5 to 8. Um, the newest ones that we have in this season coming um, either available now or coming in May um, are the Mac Rhino Private Eye, number one, Big Race Lace Case. Um, it stars a rhino who also happens to be a private detective about to embark on his 100th case. Uh, the second book, The Candy Caper Case, will come out in May. The Adventures of Allie and Amy, number one, The Best Friend Planned, follows BFFs Allie and Amy as they plan to spend the summer going through a list of their favorite things until Allie learns she's being sent to sleepaway camp. Book number two, Rockin' Rabbits, Rockin' Rockets, will be available in May. And then we have another new series um, coming out in May, and the second book will be out in, in August, and this is called Fort Builders. The first one, The Birthday Castle, introduces us to a group of friends who use teamwork, creativity, and construction know-how, and of course, fun steam stem cells skills to start their own fort building company. Book two, Happy Tales Lodge, is available in August. Um, and then we have a couple of new titles in our Ready to Read program. The first one, Kids Who Are Saving the Planet, is part of our You Should Meet nonfiction biography series about inspiring people who have achieved amazing success in their field. There's a special section at the back which includes extras, such as biographies of famous young environmental activists, plus interesting ideas for other ways that kids can work to save the environment themselves. Then we have Angelina Ballerina and the Tea Party. 
We're so excited to have Catherine Halliburton and Angelina back with us for new Angelina Publishing. Um, this is our first Angelina Ready to Read title. The next one will be Angelina Ballerina Tries Again, which will be available in May. Lastly, we have Fun Furry Friends for Your Classrooms with Max and Moe's Science Fair Surprise, where Max and Moe decide to make their own science project, like the big kids in their class, learning how to grow plants from seeds. There are also simple instructions in the back of the book to give kids a chance to grow their own plants as well. Max and Moe's 100th day of school will be available this November. Um, we also have three new chapter book series that I'm excited to tell you about. Um, Fresh Off the Boat meets Junie B. Jones in Mindy Kim, a young Asian American girl on a series of adventures. Uh, book two, Mindy Kim and the Lunar New Year Parade, is also available now. Uh, you might recognize um, Henry Heckelbeck uh, because of his older sister, Heidi Heckelbeck. Um, so Henry gets to be the star of his own series. And uh, book two, Never Cheats, is also available now. And then the last of our new chapter book series is um, this very fancy looking cover, Itty Bitty Princess Kitty. It's, she's the most fanciest and adorable kitty around. The book two, The Royal Ball, is also available now. And then we have the return of a beloved series, Franny K. Stein, Mad, Mad Scientist. This is book number nine, um, Recipe for Disaster. And this is stars the STEM-loving girl with her eye on world domination through her experimental adventures. That's it for me. This is um, some information about our website. Follow up us on social media. And we also have um, our book pantry website, simonandschuster.net slash the book pantry. You can find a lot of extra materials there, uh, a lot of author studies and um, Q and A's and fun giveaways. So feel free to check that out. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Our next presenters will be Amanda Acevedo and Taylor McBroom. Taylor is the School and Library Marketing Specialist for Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Books for Young Readers. She got her start in picture book marketing and is always happy to talk about her favorite picks for little ones. She loves working with books for all ages at HMH. Amanda is the School and Library Marketing Manager for HMH for Young Readers. After moving to Boston in 2011 to obtain her master's degree in publishing from Emerson College, she was hired at HMH and has been talking about their wonderful books ever since. Thank you for joining us today, Amanda and Taylor. Hi, everyone. This is Amanda. I'm going to start us off. So our first book is Vamos, Let's Go Eat by Raul III. Little Lobo, the hero of Vamos, Let's Go to the Market, is back and buying delicious food for a group of hungry luchadors. Little Lobo visits food trucks to get a variety of delicious-looking items, tortas, empanadas, elotes, and more. If you can read this book without also getting hungry, well, you are stronger than I am. These illustrations just make everything look so delicious, plus adding so many fun details that I notice something new every time I read it. One of our four-starred reviews for this book says, be prepared to be lost in this book para siempre. And I have to be honest with you, it's a real danger for me. We have some great author videos and a super cute activity kit. So be sure to follow us on our social media channels. We'll show those at the end of our presentation and check out our website to see those. We're going to be sharing a lot of fun behind the scenes content for all our picture books this spring. So you can follow along with all of that at hashtag picture book parade. My second book is When My Brother Gets Home. In this warm, funny story from beloved creator Tom Lichtenheld, a younger sister impatiently waits for her older brother's return from school. As his bus draws closer, she imagines all the fantastical adventures that will await them, from climbing Mount Kilimanjaro to attending a comic book convention. She knows they'll have a wonderful time. The humor here comes from the illustrations juxtaposed with the art. Climbing the mountain is actually the slide at the park. And the heart comes from the sister's happiness in looking forward to spending time with her brother. And all readers will be glad, as I was, to see her excitement shared when her brother finally does come home and is just as excited to spend the day with her. The Fabled Life of Aesop. The tortoise and the hare, the boy who cried wolf, the lion and the mouse. Most 
give us nor the stories, but how much do we know about the man behind these tales? This stunning book from Ian Lendler and two-time Caldecott Honor winner Pamela Zakdaransky is both a bi biography of Aesop and a collection of 13 of his most beloved stories. As powerful as Aesop's fables are, the most inspiring tale may be the story of Aesop himself, as we discover here, as a slave who told stories to power. Powerful, tender paintings bring this story back to life and show the origin story of the man who passed down the virtues of honesty, persistence, and kindness through the ages. And Lost Cities by Giles LaRoche. Combining world culture, history, geography, and architecture, this visually stunning look at ancient cities around the globe takes readers to such places as the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the cliff dwellings of Mesa Verde, and the mysterious sculptures of Angkor Wat. Beautiful illustrations, masterfully crafted from layers of cut paper, ask readers to spend a day in the footsteps of someone from thousands of years ago. Giles' illustrations are truly unique, and be sure to catch a video of how they're made during hashtag picture book parade. Under the Lilacs, from Ezra Jack Keats honor winner Edie Goodale comes a celebration of nature, family, and building our own hands-on adventures, perfect for any reader who's ever craved a bit of independence. In this lush and playful picture book, Kate feels ignored by her mother and sister and so decides to run away. In a neighboring yard, she builds a fort and enjoys a sense of independence until she finds herself making room for her family in her new home. And as she does, the reader comes to see that she's actually recreating her own house under the lilacs. This book is the perfect celebration of striking out on your own while still making room for your friends and family. And Speak Up by Miranda Paul, illustrated by Ebony Glenn. When something really matters, one voice can make a difference. This spirited, vibrant picture book celebrates diversity and encourages kids to speak up, unite with others, and take action when they see something that needs to be fixed. Join a diverse group of kids on a busy school day as they discover so many ways to speak up and make their voices heard. From shouting out gratitude for a special treat to challenging a rule that isn't fair, these young students show that simple, everyday actions can help people and make the world a better place. And Nonsense by Lori Mortensen, illustrated by Chloe Bristol. In this lyrical biography of one of literature's most creepily creative authors or illustrators, kids will learn about the inspiration behind a generation of creators from Lemony Snicket to Tim Burton. Known for, among other things, wearing a large fur coat wherever he went, storyteller Edward Gorey was respected for both his brilliance and his eccentricity. Gorey published over 100 books, Stories that mingled sweetness and innocence, danger and darkness, all mixed with his own brand of silliness. Illustrated with gory-like humor and inspiration by Chloe Bristol, this stunning picture book biography about this beloved creator is a first for children. Hi everyone, this is Taylor McBroom. I'm going to take over from Amanda now. So first we have Swashby in the Sea, which is the adorable result of combining two huge talents of the picture book world. New York Times bestselling author Beth Ferry and Caldecott honor winning illustrator Juana Martinez Neal. Captain Swashby loves the sea, his oldest friend, and he loves his life by the sea just as it is, salty and sandy and serene. One day, much to Swashby's chagrin, a young girl and her granny commandeer the empty house next door. All Swashby wants is for his new neighbors to go away and take their ruckus with them. When Swashby begins to leave notes in the sand for his noisy neighbors, however, the beach interferes with messages that are getting across. Could it be that the captain's oldest friend, the sea, knows what Swashby needs even better than he knows himself? This sweet, unlikely friendship story has a timeless message and, it, and is as comforting as a long nap after a day in the sun. Next, we have Outside In by Deborah Underwood, illustrated by Cindy Derby. From the New York Times bestselling author Behind the Quiet Book comes Outside In, a mindful contemplation on the many ways nature affects our everyday lives. Outside is waiting, the most patient playmate of all, the most generous friend. 
the most miraculous inventor. This thought-provoking picture book poetically underscores our powerful and enduring connection with nature, not so easily obscured by lives spent indoors. Rhythmic, powerful language shows us how our world is made in the many ways outside comes in to help and heal us. And it reminds us that we are all part of a much greater universe. Emotive illustrations evoke the beauty, simplicity, and wonder that await us all outside. In What Do You Do If You Work at the Zoo, Caldecott Honor winning team Steve Jenkins and Robin Page introduce young readers to the people who keep zoo animals safe, healthy, and happy, even though they aren't in the wild habitats they've evolved for. From cuddling a baby kangaroo to trimming elephant toenails to playing soccer with a rhino, zookeepers work hard and do some pretty wacky things to take care of the incredible animals we see. Booklist calls it clever, engaging, and always informative. This book will be welcomed by animal lovers and fans of the duo. Federico and the Wolf by Rebecca J. Gomez and illustrated by Elisa Chavari. So speaking of zoos, we have a few animal-themed books to share, including both real and imaginary creatures, beginning with Federico. With his red hoodie on his bicycle basket full of food, Federico is ready to visit Abuelo, but on the way he meets a hungry wolf and now his grandfather bears a striking resemblance to El Lobo. Fortunately, Federico is quick and clever and just so happens to be carrying a spicy surprise. Federico drives the wolf away, and he and Abuelo celebrate with a special salsa. My personal favorite part of this book is the salsa recipe included at the end. There's, and there's something about Sam, there's something strange about the new kid, though Max can't quite put his finger on it. But everyone else in his class is invited to Max's birthday sleepover, so his mom invites Sam too, and we've all had a moment like that in our lives. Sam is just as strange at the party as he is at school. He's wary of the full moon, prefers his hamburgers rare, and can't help but bite the other kids during an innocent game of Twister. But despite his initial hesitation, Max discovers that what makes us different is actually what makes us special. And then new friends can come in all shapes, sizes, and species. You've never read about a werewolf quite like Sam, and this book has the feel of an instant classic. In Playing Possum, Alfred, who plays dead, and Sophia, who rolls up in a ball, stand in for shy or anxious humans whose discomfort keeps them from fitting in. Jennifer Black Reinhardt has cast animals with defense mechanisms as characters to tell an imaginative, endearing story about learning to make friends by mastering fear and shyness. I love how this book uses the defense animals inherent in animals to explain human behaviors like anxiety in a way that the youngest readers can understand. And last but not least is Once Upon a Unicorn's Horn. So how did unicorns get their horns? It all began once upon a magical forest where a little girl named June discovered tiny horses with soft fur and sparkly tails learning how to fly. But there was one poor, sad horsey that couldn't fly at all. And of course, June was determined to help. Find out how one girl's sweet idea for cheering up her new friend turned into an unexpected treat for unicorn lovers everywhere. Featuring an imaginative little girl, little girl who loves to explore nature, this adorable story celebrates family, friendship, and finding the magic within it yourself. This is a truly adorable look at one of our favorite mythical creatures. And that is all from us. You can see our social media handles below. Please follow us and follow along in our hashtag picture book parade. You can also go to our resources site at hmhbooks.com slash kids resources. All right, thank you, Amanda and Taylor. Our final presenter today will be Christine Polis. There we go. Christina Polis has been Executive Director at Albert Whitman and Company since December 2018. And before that, she worked at Sterling Children's Books and Simon & Schuster's Simon Spotlight Imprint. Books that she's edited include A Song for Gl Gwendolyn Brooks by Alice Faye Duncan and Zia Gordon, Two Bicycles in Beijing by Teresa Robeson and oh no, Junie Wu, 
Howard Wallace P.I. by Casey Lyle, and Insignificant Events in the Life of a Cactus by Dusty Bowling. When she's not busy acquiring and editing at AW, she can be found reading, baking, or running all over Chicago. Take it away, Christina. Thank you, Julia. Okay, so I want to tell you a little bit about Albert Whitman and Company. We're a small independent publisher outside of Chicago, and we publish only children's books for all ages with the mission of helping children grow intellectually with each book that we publish. We celebrated our 100th anniversary last year, and so we're on to year number 101 with our spring 2020 list. So jumping into picture books, we have Free for You and Me, in which a group of kids explores what it means to be free, looking at the history of the five freedoms of the First Amendment and what they mean for kids today. So this can be used to discuss activism and social justice, and it has back matter that goes deeper into each freedom, along with a glossary and suggestions for further reading. Cat and Dog's Alphabet uh, finds Dog discovering 26 weird shapes, and Cat explains that that's the alphabet and shows Dog how to use them. This is a really funny, fresh take on learning the alphabet with a message about all the possibilities that letters and reading open up. Way Past Mad launches a new series that gets at emotions with immediacy. In this first entry, Kia is mad about little things like her brother messing up her room and a hole in her sock but we see how her mad builds and spreads to others, and eventually how she's able to move past it. Uh, we're looking at doing worried, sad, and jealous as future emotions in this series. In Tiara's Hat Parade, Tiara's mom used to make the most amazing hats until a new store drove her out of business. So Tiara's on a mission to bring that magic back into their lives. This comes from acclaimed author Kelly Starling Lyons, and it's a touching mother-daughter story about celebrating a special fashion tradition centered on the making and wearing of hats in black communities. And there's also back matter with profiles of prominent black milliners. Me and McGee it reminds me a lot of Casey at the Bat. This is just a classic baseball story with a fun twist at the end. Uh, I won't reveal what it is, but you'll have to read to find out. In Space Mice, two mice spot a great big ball of cheese in the sky and decide they must feast on it. So they build their own rocket, arrive at the full moon, and by the time they return to Earth, the moon isn't so full anymore. Lori Haran's simple rhyming text makes this one a great read aloud. Uh, author of Two Bicycles in Beijing, Teresa Robeson, just won the uh, Asian Pacific American Library Association's Award for Best Picture Book for her book Queen of Physics, and illustrator Jun Yi Wu illustrated one of the Newbery Honor books this year, Scary Stories for Young Foxes. So we're excited to bring them together for this book on our list. Uh, when two bicycle best friends are separated, one must search all over the city to find her friend. So this takes readers on a tour of Beijing and introduces some simple Mandarin phrases. Tag Your Dreams is a poetry collection all about play and sports and the energy and perseverance that go into them. Each poem is about being active in some way, whether that's playing foursquare at recess, uh, flying a kite, hiking, or playing popular sports like soccer, baseball, and basketball. In Playing Wicked, Dante loves playing make-believe. With his friends, he's a brave knight or a benevolent queen, but sometimes he likes to play evil characters. Uh, and the question is whether his friends will accept his love of pretending to be the wicked queen sometimes. So we love that this doesn't conform to traditional gender roles and is all about self-expression and using your imagination. The Princess and the Petri Dish is the third book we've done with this team, this author-illustrator team of Sue Fleece and Petros Bolobosis. Um, they're all fractured fairy tales with a steam bent. The first was called Mary Had a Little Lab, and then Little Red Rhyming Hood, and this is The Princess and the Petri Dish in which Princess Pippa finds a way to make peas taste good but then she's got to find a way to stop her new pea vines from taking over the castle. Luckily, she's a very resourceful princess. In the Kirkus Starred Review for My Mindful Walk with Grandma, they pointed out that it stands out from other books on mindfulness because of the strength of the narrative, which is that a little girl is on a walk with grandma, and she's so excited to show grandma that she learned how to do a loon call that she doesn't stop to slow down and take in the moment. So grandma shows her how to do that. There's an author's note here with mindfulness techniques and uh, also instructions on how to do a loon call, which I still can't do after trying. So have you ever seen someone walking a dog and the dog just stops and refuses to move? Or maybe you've been that someone walking a dog. 
Um, that's this situation coming to life in picture book form. Uh, the story is told in jaunty rhyme with a sweet ending that conveys how much we love our pets, even when they're exasperating. From celebrated picture book bio author Nancy Chernin comes the true story of Katherine Lee Bates and her inspiration for writing America the Beautiful. She penned the words before it was turned into a song. And Catherine was looking at what was dividing the country post-Civil War and what were the things that united us. So it's definitely got a timely message. Uh, this nonfiction book has back matter including an author's note, timeline, and sources. Have you ever seen a ziz? So a ziz is a mythical bird from Jewish folklore. And this rhyming read aloud explores what a ziz is and includes an author's note and information about the legend. On a farm, a pup chases a ball past two brown cows, three green frogs, four pink pigs, and on and on. This little pup is a cumulative story that's a fun take on colors and numbers and has extremely appealing art. And Kirkus said, this little pup knows how to stand up and be counted. And today is a beach day. We're celebrating a day at the beach with friends in a fun rhyming text. In fun rhyming text. Uh, Nancy Vow is also the author of First Snow, so she's exploring another season with this one, one that we are approaching um, hopefully quickly. In Too Sticky, Holly has sensory issues with autism. She loves science, but she doesn't want to make slime at school because she's worried that it will be too sticky. The book shows how she's able to overcome her fears with support and accommodation from her family and her teacher. The book stems from author Jen Malia's own sensory issues because of her autism, and she actually had a great op-ed in the New York Times in 2019 about how she and her daughter were diagnosed with autism on the same day and talked about how little girls tend to go undiagnosed more often because they learn to hide symptoms and adapt. So this book is hopefully going to be a good resource for people interested in that. In Diabetes Doesn't Stop Maddie, Maddie is nervous about going back to school after being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, but she finds friends who understand and support her. And our last picture book is called The Very Oldest Pear Tree. It is the story of the Endicott Pear Tree, a sapling brought to America in 1630, planted in Massachusetts, and still standing strong today. Um, this nonfiction book has an author's note with more information about the tree and direction to the author's website, which will include a teacher's guide. It also fits in with a lot of different school units, from fruit to history to science. Now I want to tell you a little bit about our Time to Read series. Uh, which is an early reader program with three levels that correspond to different stages of reading readiness. We have Park Here, which is a level one book, which means it has large text and strong illustration support. And in this story, Carl the car wants to go play at the park, but he misreads this sign and ends up in a parking garage, which is not nearly as fun. For level two, we have a new series launching this season called Bat and Sloth. And level two books have short sentences, some simple dialogue, and less illustration support, but still include some support. And Bat and Sloth are two nocturnal animals that kids love, and in this story they're learning how to be friends in these stories. Um, we're going to have more coming in this series next year. Detective Paw of the Law is a level three series. Our level three books have longer sentences and include more complex stories. Uh, Detective Paw emulates film noir, except the, the detective is a dog, and his partner, Patrol Officer Prickles, is a porcupine. In this, uh, this book, they are solving the mystery of why someone put ketchup on ice cream, which sounds horrifying to me. Um, and there are three other books in this smart series for you to check out. So Albert Whitman is probably most, well, most famous for the Boxcar Children chapter book mystery series. And we are still publishing into this series. We are going on numbers 154 and 155. We try to bring in modern themes as we conceptualize these. We have a lot of fun with them. Um, but there's always still the same classic boxcar themes of community and helping others and friendship and family. So in number 154, Mystery at Camp Survival, the Aldens go to an outdoor skills camp and then get lost and have to put those skills to the test. In 155, Mystery of the Forgotten Family, they help a local shop owner with amnesia find his family again. We're also bringing Boxcar Children to younger readers with early readers. These are level two in our Time to Read series, and they're adapted from the original chapter books written by Gertrude Chandler Warner. We are launching a new chapter book series this season called A Dog's Day, getting a great response. 
Um, these are told from a working dog's point of view, and they describe each dog's job. So they're action-packed and engaging, and there's more information at the back about each animal's job. Jax is a livestock guardian dog, and Ava is an avalanche rescue dog. I wanted to highlight quickly some of our other popular chapter book series. The Pato Power is about a boy whose shoes give him superpowers as he deals with everyday things. Elixir Fixers is a fantasy series where Sasha's dad runs a potion shop, and Miss Bunsen's School for Brilliant Girls are steam-based adventures at a school with a quirky headmistress. And last but not least, we have one middle, young middle grade title on our spring 2020 list. Quack is about a boy named Shady who deals with selective mutism. Uh, he and his best friend Puya find an abandoned baby duck, Svenrietta, who becomes Shady's emotional support duck and helps them and all the underducks at their school stand up for themselves. So if you'd like to know more about any of these titles, Feel free to reach out to us. Um, all of our titles are also now available for review on Edelweiss. And yeah, you definitely feel free to reach out with questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Christina. And a big thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists. So we've ended up with a little extra time here at the end. So we have about five minutes in which we can do a Q&A with all the publishers here. So if any of you have questions you would like to ask, can you please submit them in the Q&A box on the chat side of your screen and we'll, we'll see what comes in and what we can answer. Ah, oh, this is a good one. Okay, from Karen. For every panelist here, which book from your list would you say is a must-have? Um, this is Valerie from Running Press Kids. Um, Sugar and Milk, absolutely must-have. This is uh, Dina Sherman um, from Disney Publishing. Um, I would say for us, uh, definitely, we will rock our classmates. Anything Ryan Higgins, both that and What About Worms, they're both fantastic. <laughs> um, this is uh, this Sarah Woodruff. I would say um, I'm going to push through. I think that the messages, um, the read aloud, the messages work for all sorts of ages, um, and it's just so empowering. This is um, Christina Post from... Oh, go ahead, Amanda. Okay. Uh, this is Amanda Acevedo from Houghton. Uh, I would, my personal favorite, and I think the essential is Vamos, Let's Go Eat. It's just such a celebration of Mexican culture at a time where that's kind of threatened. Um, to, so just to see that, and just it's incredibly beautiful and just so much fun. It's absolutely my favorite. This is Christina from Albert Whitman, and yeah, I would say for picture books, Free for You and Me is just super informative but fun at the same time, and then Dog's Day has been a huge hit with kids from what we've seen so far in terms of chapter books. That's great. Is that everyone? I don't want to cut anyone off. I think it was. Okay. Fantastic. Um, we have um, a question that are any of your chapter books being turned into audio books as well as the physical books? This is Dina from Disney. Um, my answer is kind of unfortunately a, a non-answer, which is I don't actually know. We don't do any of our own audio books. They're all licensed. So unfortunately, I don't usually know um, ahead of time if something's going to be turned into an audiobook. Um, and this is Sarah from Simon & Schuster. As far as I know, we don't have audio plans for our chapter books, but it's definitely something that I can inquire about, especially if you are having interest. Um, and this is Christina from Albert Whitman. Uh, I don't think we have plans to turn them into audiobooks yet, but it's certainly something that we are considering. And yeah, please do let, let me know if you have interest as well.
All right. I think that is all we have time for. Thank you, everyone. Um, other questions that were asked will get addressed later in email follow up. So don't worry if we didn't call it out right here at the end. Um, so let's just move along. So tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com slash webinar, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the Booklist Reader, where Booklist contributors post daily about all things books and library land. And Booklist has a digital, digital edition of the magazine, which you can connect to your subscription online. This format pairs the page-by-page -page reading experience of print with the convenience of online access, and it's included free with all Booklist subscriptions. Not yet a subscriber, Take advantage of this webinar offer and get print, online, digital, and archive access to Booklist for only $99. Tired of waiting to see the latest copy of Booklist or worrying it might get misplaced on its way to you? You can now purchase an extra copy of Booklist for your library for just $50. To learn more, please visit bit.ly slash booklist for 50. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, and one more thank you to all our sponsors, Running Press Kids, Disney Publishing Worldwide, Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Books for Young Readers, and Albert Whitman & Company. This concludes today's webinar.